Um, so uh, what do you think of the, of the uh, contribution of the scientists in Baghdad and uh, the Arabs? Uh, well, this goes back to a question you asked earlier about the, uh, the ups and downs. Um, when, um, when the Roman Empire crumbled in the West, it, it continued in Byzantium for another thousand years, and no science was done. Uh, the whole, I, I have never heard of any advance made by a Byzantine scientist. I'm, possibly there were. I don't know everything, but they certainly weren't um, impressive. Uh, Gibbon attributes this to the rise of Christianity and the decline of paganism, that Christianity was a much more all-embracing faith than pagan faiths. And uh, according to Gibbon, uh, the Byzantines felt that an interest in nature was the surest sign of an unbelieving mind. Uh, well, something that, like that happened then in Islam. Uh, when science disappeared in the West, it was picked up in the East, uh, particularly in the caliphate of the Abbasids, uh, with, whose capital was Baghdad, although it really spread tremendously into Central Asia and and uh, Afghanistan, uh, and then into Spain. You have throughout the whole Islamic world all writing in Arabic, so I call it Arab civilization, but there were Persians and Jews and Turks and Kurds, uh, as well as Arabs, uh, doing really not just continuing the tradition of the Greeks, but really doing brilliant new things of their own. Um, when I, uh, I, write, I write in the book about Descartes' explanation of the rainbow, I learned to my surprise that uh, although not quantitatively the way Descartes did, the understanding of what makes a rainbow goes back to these, to these Arabs. But then it, it began to peter out. And after about 1100, uh, the great names of Arab science no longer appear. I mean, great names like Al-Razi and uh, uh, Ibn Sina, uh, Omar Khayyam, Al-Biruni, Al-Batani, they, they all, they're, they're not there anymore. Uh, some science continues to be done, but it dwindles out. Uh, the Arabs go on, or excuse me, the Muslims go on building observatories but even after the advent of telescopes in the West, they don't use telescopes because they're not interested in science. They're interested in building observatories to improve their calendars and to determine the Qibla, the direction to Mecca. Uh, science is definitely, in my view, although it's very controversial, and you get your head taken off saying this and to the wrong people, um, the uh, science really began a decline in the world of Islam. And certainly when the scientific revolution came, although to some extent based on Arab work, uh, Tycho Brahe, Copernicus quoted uh, half a dozen Arab astronomers. Uh, it, it's all in the West. It's all in Europe. Um, and again, is that religion? I don't know. There is a, a, a great anti-scientific figure, Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, who worked in Baghdad around 1100 and wrote a book called The Incoherence of the Philosophers, which is a um, polemic against science. He was very influential. But to what extent Islam in general, or al-Ghazali in particular, led to the decline of science in the Arab world, I just don't know. Um, it may be that civilizations lose steam, uh, maybe really losing steam. When you compare the public works, uh, this has nothing to do with science, but it's the same sort of thing in a way. The public works that were being built in America in the 30s and 40s and 50s, the great dams and bridges and the interstate highway system, and the fact that now they're crumbling without the public being willing to spend the money to continue uh, that effort, uh, it does give you a feeling of a civilization in decline.